Hello everyone, and welcome to the Gnosis Builders Workshop, Building on Gnosis Chain, the what, why, and where. Joining us today is Olu, who will be taking us through this session. And with that, I'll pass it over to Olu to get the session started. Hi guys, welcome to the session. Um, yes, um, I'll be taking us through this um, very few, uh, brief session on uh, building on Gnosis Chain, um, what you need to know about Gnosis Chain, um, where you need to get information is and how you could go about it. Um, questions, um, you could be typed into the chat and I'll, I'll get to them. Thank you. So this is, um, what the talk is all about. Um, the what's the why and where of building on Gnosis chain. Um, we're going to talk about what is Gnosis chain, why you should consider Gnosis chain how to build on this chain. Um, we are going to talk briefly about um, Gnosis Builders. So what is Gnosis Chain? Um, Gnosis Chain is an L1 POS based EVM compatible chain. Um, basically what all this means is that it um, is compatible with Ethereum and uh, you could build on it same as you could build on Ethereum. Um, it's operates with a dual token system. We have uh, one token for gas and the other for staking. Um, the XDAI is used for gas at the GA not for staking. Um, XDAI itself is pegged uh, one to one with the US dollar um, and is derived from the DAI on Ethereum. Um, what this means is that transactions are very, very cheap on this exchange. With um, hundred dollars, you could do as many as the hundred k transactions, or even more, depending on the type of transactions you're doing. So, and um, the reason for um, having this dual token system is also so that um, staking can also be done very easily, as we'll see um, later on. Gnosis chain itself is, <coughs> excuse me, is community powered and developers focused. And anyone in the world can become a validator on the chain, and it is pretty very easy to do. So, what's the mission of Gnosis Chain? Um, Gnosis Chain aims to be the most decentralized blockchain. Um, we have already tools that we use to measure decentralization, as you see later on, and um, why. Um, Mrs. Chain is most suitable in making this contract because currently there are over 115k um, validators on the Mrs. Chain and the screen. And the entry to become a validator is just one journal. Like I said earlier, um, this is the reason why we have this two token system. The journal is used for validators and you need just one of it to become a validator. To contrast that with Ethereum that requires that it's two heads to Data. Now, um, I said earlier that the chain is compatible with um, the EVM. So, how do we achieve um, this one GNO to 32 at uh, this point? What happens is your one GNO is converted to something called MGNO, and one GNO is 32 MGNO. So, the MGNO is basically what is used for validation, and that makes it compatible with the figure. And this chain, okay. There's a question in the chat. Um, Gnosis Chain also strives to become accessible for all user tribes um, through straightforward user onboarding and developer experience. Um, the onboarding uh, for Gnosis Chain is very easy, very straightforward. Um, converting your GNO to MGN or becoming a validator, have tools that could help you do that um, with just a few clicks. You don't need to have any advanced knowledge of how the internet work we, we provide tools for you that you could go do a few clicks and you've become a validator so what's the um, key priorities that Gnosis Chain strives to achieve one of them is decentralization like I said we want to be the most decentralized um, chain. Um, we also um, prioritize validator experience. 
we have an intuitive validator experience um, dashboard um, that you could use to um, basically become a validator without having to go through a lot of stress. Um, for example, if you're using um, Stadium.net, with just a few clicks and in a few minutes, you could become a, val a, a validator and everything is set up very easily for you. Um, user onboarding as well is very seamless and accessible. And um, we have a very robust and growing ecosystem. Um, there are a lot of um, DDA rules and dApps that have already been developed and deployed on the ecosystem. So why should you be interested in all of this? this why, should you, why should you want to build on your system? Um, like I said, decentralization is very key. Um, with about 115 validators, no system is the second most decentralized chain. Um, accessibility is also very important. Either you're a developer or you're a user, um, getting started on the system is intuitive, it's affordable, it's easy. Um, another thing is speed. Transaction time on this chain is about five seconds, um, which means you could do lightning tra uh, fast transactions. It is also cheap. Um, with 0.01x that you'll be able to make hundreds of transactions. And um, it is stable, stability. Um, uh, paying for um, transaction using X that which is uh, basically one to one with a US dollar means that um, your transaction fees are predictable and they are not subject to market volatility. Okay. So this is um, the current state of Gnosis chain. You could see this info on gnosismetrics.com. Um, we have about 27,000 active accounts. Um, in the last 30 days, about 1.6 million transactions processed. About 3,000 X die have been paid in fees for those 1.6 million transactions. About 115K validators. Um, the total value of um, USD deposited is about 12 million, and the current yield for validators is uh, about 15.2%. So, all of this info can be seen and more if you go to the transactional active accounts, gas fees, on Gnosis metrics. That's called. So what was the short summary on why you should uh, consider an exchange? It is user-friendly. We have a strong ecosystem. We also have a grants program um, so that you, your career that you are building, you could apply for grants. And um, there's an ecosystem that's, you know, and a deal that you know, works around that and helps to support public uh, good projects. Um, yeah, so you could receive support for not just for uh, grant money, you could receive support for marketing, of course, liquidity, you could receive support for networking, and so much more for the business builders. Team. So, where do you start from? Um, first thing first, you have to um, connect your wallet to the chain. Um, you could um, use the RPC endpoint, the chain ID, and the currency symbol as a display. Um, alternatively, you could just go to the chainlist.org and go to the um, slash chain slash hundred sub part and your wallet will be automatically configured for you. And um, again, this is all very easy and intuitive and straightforward. You don't need to have um, special knowledge or anything to be able to do this. And after you've connected your wallet, um, like I said, it is 100% EVM compatible. Basically, this means that you could use all of the DAP development tools you use on Ethereum on Gnosis chain without changing anything. You could take a smart contract or a project built for Ethereum and deploy it on Gnosis chain without uh, much access. In fact, most of the time, you don't have to change anything. Just uh, deploy one-to-one -one with, uh, with the Gnosis chain. So what this means is all of the tools that are available um, on Ethereum can also be used on Gnosis Chain uh, easily. Um, your Remix, your uh, Adat, your Truffle, whatever tool you use to um, develop on Ethereum, you could use those same tools on Gnosis Chain. 
apart from that, all of the libraries are also 100% compatible. You could use any open Zeppelin library or any other library that you're familiar with um, on Gnosis chain as well. So where are the resources you could, you could get started with? Um, the, the first place I would recommend to go is Gnosis.io. This is the main website. It provides a yeah. very quick overview of what Gnosis chain is. Um, you also provide a view of the grants program and how to get started on that. Um, the next point of call is docs.nosischain.com. This is the entry point to all documentations for Gnosis Chain, uh, for um, either your developer, the validator, or you're just reviewing. This is the best point of call. But if you are a developer and just want to start development right away, you could go to the slash developer sub -band. Um, GnosisWallets.com is also um, a good resource here. You could see all the available wallets um, that uh, are supported on Gnosis Chain and you could um, easily click through um, and select your preferred parameters and you get um, links and you know documentations and stuff to the wallets that fits your preferred choice. Um, access to faucet is also very important. So we have gnosisfaucet.com where you can get a small amount of X dye that you can um, use to start building immediately and deploy international the Gnosis chain. Um, if the X dye you get from gnosisfaucet.com is not enough, you could also visit buyxdye.com. We have um, a lot of resources there to show where you can get X dye easily, either you want to um, buy it credit card that you want to swap it on chain or you want to bridge it to um, the Ethereum Gnosis chain. We have a lot of resources there for you and with just a few clicks you could get started. And if you want GNO, you could just go to the slash GN so part of buyxdi.com and um, you'll be able to get GNO. And finally we have um validatingnosis.com there is um, also very simple intuitive interface to guide you. Um if you are interested in becoming a validator on Gnosis Chain. Again, all of these tools are very, very easy to use. You don't need a lot of specialized knowledge to use them. So them are just click throughs and you get some um, simple easy to follow guides on how to do these things. So um, finally, I said we're going to talk briefly about Gnosis Builders. So what is Gnosis Builders? Um, Gnosis Builders is um, an ecosystem team for uh, Gnosis Chain. We are basically a community uh, that um, build for Gnosis Chain. Um, you could visit our website to find all of the various tools I'm talking about. Um, and you could use all of these links to get in touch with us as well. Um, we have um, a developers program, Gnosis Builders that comes with developers. We also have a users program. Um, you could check the validators. And if you want to see all of the um, events and the other community that we support, go to the slash community um, sub part. So um, also you could reach out to us if you have um, a project you want us to collaborate with you on or that you want us to support, you could reach us from um, Mrs. Builders as well. And um, yeah, we are also on Twitter, we're on Discord, we're on Telegram reach us easily on any of these uh, channels and um, that is it folks thank you awesome cheers thank you olu um does anybody have any questions we had a comment uh, that gnosis chain is the only evm chain compatible with ethereum at the beacon chain level um, by ethan Yes, thanks, Ethan. Yeah, that is very correct. I guess if anybody wants to ask a question, uh, feel free to type in the chat or take yourself off mute. Uh, Gavin asks, Gnosis has uh, all same print compiles then? Yeah. Yes. Um... So, um, like I said, it is 100% EVM compatible. You don't need to do anything, whatever it is that you do on Ethereum. 
you could just take it one to one like that and deploy on this chain without doing anything. Yeah, can you talk about the hackathon rewards? Uh, um, okay, I don't have, I don't know, is, is Ethan here? Ethan from um, Nurses Chain? I can also try finding um, stuff from from the site in the in the mean, meantime, uh, Ethan, I can get back to yeah. you. To that. Um, the next question was: Is the Gnosis safe anyhow related to the Gnosis chain? A Gnosis safe is um, a wallet that is um, that you could use to do uh, 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 not signature. So it is not. Uh, it is not related to Gnosis Chain, uh, but it is also a very good resource you could use if you want to do uh, multi-signature wallets. Okay. And is Gnosis compatible with Polybase? I'm not sure what Polybase is, so I'm, I can't really answer that. Uh, Ceci, I don't know if you want to take yourself off mute and maybe clarify, or you can type in the chat as well. Um, in the meantime, we can, if not, we can move on. Um, is there a yeah, rock? I'm not, sure, I'm not sure in Zalu. Sorry. Oh yeah. Is there a rocket pool fork already on Gnosis? Um, none that I know of. Oh, uh, let's see. It says, uh, so yeah, guys, uh, we have a second part, uh, if you don't mind, because we have just 10 minutes left. Uh, we want to present one more product. And then we, we continue with questions in the end. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, can I share my screen or Aldo, uh, you have my presentation? Yeah. No, I just stopped sharing. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so I want to yeah, to introduce Hashi. So it's a project by Gnosis Guild um and in in the Gnosis ecosystem in general this is very very new. Um so I want to introduce this guys to you because there are relevant bounties around that. So um, yeah, what, what is Hashi exactly? So Hashi bri means bridge uh, in Japanese, um, and we aim here to define a standard for cross-chain communication. Um, with the main difference is that we, we want to be based on additive security and multiple inputs. We call them oracles. More on that later. Um, at its core, uh, Hashi is a header oracle aggregator. And the ultimate goal here is to um, basically distribute uh, trust for bridges, but on the security mechanism level. Um, yeah, if I can use just one phrase to, to describe that, uh, what Hashi is doing, like why would you choose just one bridge security? mechanism when you can have all of them, right? Um, and next one is why why Hashi was created. So uh, in 2022, we had uh, more than 2 billion uh, in, in hacks uh, because of uh, bridge issues. And uh, on on REC news leaderboards, all the, the top projects, four out of five are related to bridges. So what is the summary here is like no bridge security mechanism is 100% secure. Um, all designs have uh, trade-offs, right? So um, so a couple of, of principles around uh, Hashi, the way it was designed. So uh, we want to standardize uh, at the lowest possible level. And this is the block header. It's not like on, on, on transaction or on tokens, but it's on the block header level. And... 
the goal here is to to diversify uh, this cross chain communication uh, by different implementations, so different kind of bridges, right? Um, so we we assume here that no bridge design can be considered hundred percent secure. Um, so we will basically check uh, multiple bridges for the result they're giving uh, to to validate a specific uh, block header from another blockchain. Um, and, and of course, when we maximize security um, over latency, so uh, here uh, the, the, the whole design of the system basically makes, the, makes it slower. Um, but we have uh, enhanced security. So a couple of uh, yeah main components of this system. Um, so imagine we have we have the applications, right? So applications are a token bridge, a, a governance bridge, an NFT bridge, any kind of uh, bridge you you can imagine. And then we have the block header oracles, which are the actual bridges. So here there can be uh, bridges you already know. Um, for example, wormhole or the Gnosis chain A and B or a Hope protocol or Connect any any bridge basically. Um, and then we have the core contracts, which I'll present right after. Uh, the main one is called Hashi, uh, which is a, a, the, the aggregator. Um, Giri Giri Bashi, another Japanese, I don't know if I have any Japanese speakers in the audience. Uh, this basically is um, taking care of governance, so uh, which oracles will be added and, and, and thresholds and so forth. Um, then another component is the storage proofs. Um, we need basically a proof on this concept that a specific transaction uh, is included in a specific block header, and and this is uh, um, this is, is done, for example, with a project like Axiom. Um, but there are other alternatives uh, that you can explore, and then we have the reporter contracts and the relayers, which are basically um, helper uh, components that will initiate the message transfers and listen to events uh, uh, cross-chain. Um, and yeah, th this is the most important part to understand uh, Hashi um, is, a, is an architecture overview. So it might look a bit, uh, yeah, uh, difficult to describe in a couple of minutes, but uh, um, I want to focus here. So mainly, let's say we have two chains, right? We have Ethereum mainnet and we have Gnosis chain. So these are the two main contracts I just mentioned before, uh, the Hashi and the Giri Giri Bashi, uh, and and these um, these here are are the bridges basically, right? So uh, the examples I mentioned before, you have A and B. This is the Gnosis uh, Omni Bridge. Maybe you've heard of it. Uh, wormhole telepathy. This is a solution by Sync Labs, zk Bridge, any kind of bridge, right? And then we need to build adapters for all these bridges that feed into Hashi, right? And high level, what is happening here is that um, we are asking um, from like on the application level. So here I took as an example, a, a token bridge. Um, we are asking through this helper components here, um, uh, a specific block header from Ethereum mainnet to be transferred by all of these bridges, right? So the AMB will transfer the block header, the wormhole will transfer the block header and so forth. And on the other side, Hashi will get the answers from all the bridges and it will compare them. And uh, this is, a, the Giri bus is a, about the governance. So you can say, okay, if two or three out of five or five out of eight, whatever you want to set, uh, agree and give me the same answer, then I can be very, very sure that this is correct. And this connects to what I just mentioned uh, in the beginning that uh, here we don't trust any one of them 100%. We, we basically ask all of these bridges to uh, give us the same input. We ask them, give me a block error from the other side. And if one of them is compromised, let's say telepathy or AMB is compromised uh, and and they uh, give a, a wrong uh, result uh, that is different by the majority, then we know these are compromised, but our system is still intact, right? 
So that's I think the main uh, the main lesson for uh, for Hashi that we want really to uh, to create additive security and aggregate all possible um, uh, bridges and to to be as secu- as uh, sure as possible that we have the correct result. Um, yeah, and and this part here is what I just what I mentioned before about the storage proofs, right? So. Uh, this is uh, quite complex. I'll, I'll maybe explain a little bit later. Is um, we need a component here, a, a contract that basically will check that a specific transaction is included in a specific block header, right? So this uh, will will give a block header, and here you have to check. Oh, the transaction that I initiated here is it included in the block header? And then you can say. If it is included, then you can make sure that this actual uh, token bridge transaction on the other side happened, right? And and yeah, then that's basically it. The token can be bridged. Um, what can you build now with Hashi? Um, so now that goes that goes to the hackathon and connects to to many of the prizes we have there. Uh, you can write an adapter for another bridge. Um, so the similar to the one I to the ones I showed, uh, you can write this contract, this miracle, miracle proof um, that proves that basically specific event um, or a transaction is included in a specific block header. Uh, then you can look at the uh, the governance uh, contract we have and improve it in any kind of way. It's uh, kind of, at the moment it's very um, I wouldn't say simple, but it's, it doesn't have a lot of complex. Uh, use cases yet and you can also of course i mean this is quite hard at the moment but you can try and build a, a end-to-end application that will make for example a token transfer super super secure by uh, three four five different bridges um and yeah to help in that uh, these are the resources we have so far so the main one is uh the repository uh you will see there that they already Adapters implemented for three um, bridges. Um, you can add more. And if you want to play around with the, or even interact with the contracts we have already on testnet, these are the addresses. So we have on Gurley and Shadow at the moment, which Shadow is the testnet of uh, Gnosis Chain. And yeah, I think I'll stop here and maybe we can check if there are any questions because we have three minutes left. Um, yeah, yeah. There's a good amount of questions. Um, I sky scrolling back up to the top. Uh, let's see, is there a rocket pool fork already on Gnosis? Mm, rocket pool. Uh, oh, I'm not sure about that. Uh, by the way, guys, for any questions, you need to. Uh, you can. You can. I think there should be a channel in this global. Yeah, and yeah. Get that link. And we'll monitor that because there are different teams, like the Hashi team, for example, the builders. And then we can, uh, if you have, for example, Hashi related questions, I will jump in for other projects. Some other person will jump in. Um, and uh, what are, what are some cool projects on Gnosis? Uh, cool. Um, uh- I think I already responded to that. We have quite a number of uh, projects that are on Nusis Chain. I could quickly share my screen to show you a slide. Uh, so these are some of the projects that um, we've been able to put together that are on Nusis Chain. You can see we have the file, we have Successes. We have infrastructure projects, we have DAOs, NFT games, not providers. So, and this list, I think, is a bit old. Um, I'm sure there are other projects that are coming up as we speak. Yeah, and sorry, uh, Olu, I just saw that you responded to some of these questions. So, just going to the ones that haven't been responded, uh, Manu asked, what are the more important things you were looking for in projects in the hackathon? Um, 
I can't really say because, um, but um, first thing first, the project needs to be interesting. It needs to solve um, a particular problem. It needs to, um, um, it, there needs to be value, you know, some sort of value that is being added either to the community or to the chain on the, the project. So yes. Okay, and uh, wouldn't Hashi be very slow to reach consensus? Yeah, I was just uh, an answering that. Uh, so yeah, it depends. So the main point here is that Hash is super modular and configurable. So uh, it depends if you want to make it super fast, you can use just two oracles with some two multi-sig bridges and that will be super fast. But if you want to make it super secure, uh, what we want to make, for example, for Hashi, ideally at one implementation that will combine a lot of ZK light client bridges, right? Together with multi-sig bridges. And that will be slower, but a lot more secure. Okay. And uh, are the deployed contracts in dogs? And, um, actually, no, because I think we deployed them yesterday, but um, I think they're not in the repo, but feel free to ask the questions there. Um, and I, I'll provide you any information you guys need. Okay. And uh, the ERC4337 entry point contract is deployed on Tenosis chain. Is anyone building out bundler infrastructure for 4337 on Gnosis? None that I know of. I think that's all the questions right now. And yeah, if if, if people have more questions, then I posted the uh, the Discord link there in um, to Gnosis, so I post it again here. Please feel free to reach out to them um, at any point, and they'll be able to answer. Anybody from the team will be able to answer any other questions that you may have. But um, if there are no other questions, I'll just say thank the team for the great presentation and thank you all for, for being here today. Um, and uh, yeah, have a great rest of the day and happy hacking.